mm-hmm. which is that if there's no free will, mm-hmm. then I don't see how reason functions, full stop. So when you say you're an atheist or agnostic or whatever, and even just saying, making the statement that free will does not exist, the only way you can come to believe that or to believe, you know, or to say I'm an atheist is through presumably a, a reason of a process of reason and evidence. But if everything we think and say and do is predetermined, that is, that's all been predetermined by a non-rational process. And therefore, I can't see how we ground the idea of coming to evidential, reasonable conclusions right. you know, in a universe which doesn't allow for free will. Yeah, it's an interesting point. I think mm. it, it's similar but not the same as something like the fallacy of composition to say okay. that because we come from uh, irrational origins, the, the result can't be rational. I think mm. that rationality is a product of naturalism. So I don't think it's a problem to say that... Uh, that rationality has has arisen from the non-rational in the same way that I don't think that any individual atom is conscious but if you put enough atoms together in, in, in the right formation in our brains then it gives rise to consciousness even though the components are not themselves conscious just as no molecule of water is itself wet uh, right. despite the composition being and it would be a similar argument to say like well it's but, but constituted it, it, of is, isn't it true though that if determinism is true, which I think you believe is, is the case. I don't necessarily believe that's the case, and I, okay. can, I can tell you why, but, mm. but I, well, I mean, look, so either determin I mean, the, the law of, uh, a, a, a fundamental law of logic is that P is true or not true. Mm. It's one or the other, and it can't mm. be anything else. Now, determinism is either true or not true, so the universe is either determined or it's indetermined. Mm-hmm. If it's determined, then we're following on a chain of causation and yeah. we have no control. Mm. If it's indetermined, then by definition there has to be an element of randomness and randomness by definition you don't have any control over either so sure. but it's either like, way it's logically free will doesn't true exist. yeah it's, but, but it makes it kind of logically true that free will can't exist right but but okay but either way you get to it determinism mm-hmm. or kind of randomness free will doesn't exist mm-hmm. and and the problem for me is that the very basis on which you come to your decisions has to involve free will at some level because you you have weighed up the evidence and decided that it's unlikely that God exists, you're therefore an atheist. You've looked at the evidence from the universe and science and everything else and said, looking at all this, I don't think free will exists. But in the very process of making those decisions, you are using a process which has to be free to make any sense because you you have to have the ability to choose one or the other. But if determinism is true or free will simply doesn't exist, you never had a choice. You you were always going to be an atheist. I was always going to be a Christian. Uh, it basically boils down to the way our brains are, work. It's nothing to do with us arriving at rational conclusions from evidence. And for me, that undercuts the whole, it undercuts naturalism, full stop. Because if if you've arrived at the belief that naturalism is true by a process which is itself non-rational, and in which free will can't exist, I then don't understand how you can have any confidence in your belief in naturalism because you haven't actually arrived at it by a, by a rational process. Do you choose to become convinced of an argument's conclusion? Well, I, I choose to look at the evidence and decide whether it makes sense. But do you get to choose what convinces you and what doesn't? Um, yeah, I think I do. Okay, so... Uh... Here's an argument that God doesn't exist. There's evil mm. and suffering in the world, mm. uh, therefore God does not exist. Just just choose, for the purpose of argument here, just just, just choose to be convinced of that for a second. Choose to be convinced that... Yeah, that God doesn't that exist. That God doesn't yeah. exist. Just just do that real quick. Well, I, obviously I'm, I'm not... I can't choose in that sense to be convinced of, of that. Right. So you're actually not... Th- there's no level of choice uh, when it comes to actually becoming convinced of a proposition. So all of the propositions that you believe... You didn't choose to believe. Well, I, well, well, I did. I, I, I chose them in a process. I mean, just simply giving me two propositions, I'm not going to suddenly change the belief that I've arrived at over a period of time. But why not? Because there is a process of evaluation and looking and reasoning I mean, the answer that needs to, me to take is place to, 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 to get there. Because it's unconvincing, right? It, it's, not, it's not convincing of, enough for me to just say, there's evil in the world, therefore yeah, God sure. doesn't exist. But you don't get to choose whether or not it's convincing. 
And if I if I if I make that argument more complicated, if I say, well, evil exists in the world and it's unnecessary, and God doesn't exist, okay, still not convinced. And let's add a premise like, uh, and and if God is ultimately good, then he will uh, eliminate all unnecessary evil. And you make it more and more complicated, mm. and eventually mm. you might turn around and say, you know what, actually that that's a convincing argument. Right. I'm convinced that God mm. doesn't exist, yeah. but you don't get to choose any part of whether or not that chain of reasoning convinces you. You are just led to that conclusion. Like if I, if I present an argument that you find convincing, you have no choice but to just become convinced of that conclusion. And that's what happens in all rational processes. The, the choice, I, I, I see where you think the choice yeah, lies, which yeah. is the choice to kind of weigh up the sides. Yeah, now I would yeah. argue that you actually don't have a choice to do that because everything is is ultimately out of your control. And I'm talking like everything to the extent that you didn't but, choose but, to, to yeah, sit in that but, exact but the position. The problem is that the person who, who any any position at all, whether you're a Christian atheist or whatever, you didn't have a you didn't have any choice in it. If free will doesn't exist, it could never have been different. And and so the problem for me is that I often hear atheists saying, "Show me the evidence, show me the reasoning, <laughs> and, and all the rest of it." Yeah. And the problem is, if an atheist also believes there's no such thing as free will then they're asking for an impossibility because none of us arrive at it by, in fact, by a process of reasoning. And, and no, but they, they it, do. They, they, they arrive at the process of reasoning even though they don't get to choose whether or not the reasoning convinces them. So the reason why I would say to you, mm. try and give me an argument that convinces me for Christianity is because I recognize that I don't get to choose what's convincing and that it might be within your capability to produce an argument that I have to accept and so you're, I'm not asking you an impossibility. It's not the case that I always have to be an atheist because you could but produce reasoning. You, you, you don't. That makes out though that 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 I have <laughs> that I am capable mm -hmm. of changing your mind yeah. by an argument, and that you could have thought otherwise. Okay, that 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 there's a sort no, of sense in which not necessarily. It, it doesn't mean that I that that like well I could have thought otherwise had you said something different, but you couldn't have said something different. So right. actually, maybe that's where the confusion lies. Okay. Like, I'm not saying that, that, um, yeah, that, that's, I think, I think that might be, might be, might be the point. Uh, it, it's hard to, it, it's hard to phrase. Um, you, if you present an argument that convinces me that Christianity exists, mm. it is perfectly possible that had you presented a different argument, I may have not become convinced, mm. but the impossibility lies in the fact that you couldn't have presented the other argument. Now, you could say mm. that logically speaking, if you had, then I'd have not become convinced or, or, or done differently. Mm. But that's just like saying, if things had gone differently, then they would have gone differently, which, yeah, which, yeah, yeah. that's that's yeah. the case. Yeah. Like, if 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 you chose to get the, the, the bus instead of the train, then you'd have got the bus. Like, who mm. cares? Like, mm. that's not mm. that's not a relevant point to make. Well, it seems relevant to me in as much as I think you know. If if you're you you have seemed to have arrived at the positions you take through a, a process of logic and reasoning, mm -hmm. okay. And, and my simple point is only that I feel like I'm I'm repeating myself, so so forgive me if I am. But is that that process requires you to have been able to choose why. Because that's what reasoning is. It's the ability to choose between alternatives on the basis of the best evidence. Well, I'm not sure. I think reason reason is is that that is often what what is like entailed by the yeah. process of reasoning. It's yeah. the experience of of choosing an option. But mm. it's conceivable that reason can exist in isolation. Like reason is an attempt to know truth. Mm. So, like I I don't I don't understand why. You need the option to have reasoned differently. If the, if the whole if the whole point of reason is is to to get to what we believe to be truth and objective truth, mm. then if our reason is functioning properly, then we must arrive at that conclusion. If if it's functioning properly, if if it achieves the goal we want it to achieve, which right. often practically it doesn't, then it has to has to achieve the same the same point. If there is an objective standard of truth. And you and I are both using reason, and the, the 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 point of our using reason is to achieve that objective standard of truth. Then our goal is to get to that point, and nothing else. Right. You, you don't need the the option to get it wrong, in order to get it right. <laughs> I I mean, 
all, all it strikes me though is that all of this seems to be com you know completely arbitrary if if we were always going to take the position we take it, because of the, the 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 physical nature of the universe you were always going to be there making your argument yeah. i was always going to be here making my argument and for me i then don't understand how that equates to being a rational process because like you know as i've heard you say in videos things could never have been different to the way they are mm -hmm. so in what sense did you have any control over your choice to be an atheist oh i had no control over it right uh, but but that's that's just that's just the point it's like but then you haven't arrived at it by a rational process as far as i can see well i have no just because i'm not in control of it doesn't mean it's not doesn't mean it's irrational 